Let's start with section 2 of the assignment. It's about principle of inclusion exclusion. So the first question is in a class of 40 girls there are 18 girls who like to play chess. 23 girls like to play soccer and some of the girls like to play um, uh, bicycling. They like to uh, uh, ride bicycles uh, some of the girls like uh, two kind of sports so these girls like nine girls like chess and soccer some like chess and biking and some like biking and soccer and there are four girls who like all three activities so only unknown thing is how many girls like biking so how to find it out Let's list down first of all all the information that we have been given. So we are given there are 40 girls. So all together if I represent the whole data with my circles and Venn diagram. So all the data in these three circles is 40. The number of girls are 40. Among those 18 are playing chess. So let's call it A. So in the circle A are those girls who like to play chess and these are 18 girls. In circle B, these are those girls who want to play, who like, who like to play soccer. So there are 23 girls. And then in circle C, we have those girls who like to bike, who like biking. And we don't know this number, we have to figure it out. And we have we are given some intersections, those who play chess and soccer. So intersection of A and B. So this number is nine. Similarly, chess and biking. This number is seven. So seven girls like to play both chess and biking. So it means seven girls belong to around this area, which belong uh, which belong to both chess and soccer. And then uh, there are 12 girls which like both soccer and biking. Pink. And there are 4 girls which like soccer, chess and biking. So these 4 girls are actually we can say it is this area in the middle. So which likes chess, soccer and biking. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, uh, to understand this problem, let's first take a sim simple example in which we have only two cases playing chess and playing soccer. So 18 girls play soccer. Uh, sorry, 18 girls play chess and 23 girls play soccer. Okay, fine. And then there are nine girls which play soccer and chess. So it is this area. Uh, this is the intersection of the two cases. So how many total number of girls are there? Is it 18 plus 23? 18 in circle A and 23 in circle B. But then we are counting some girls twice. These nine girls which belong to circle A and they also belong to circle B. So if we are uh, going to union a union b can we say a plus b obviously we cannot say like this so uh, we have to subtract one time this intersection because a intersection b which is this area it is appearing two times so it belongs to a and it belongs to b when we are counting a over here so we are counting these nine girls when we are counting soccer girls then again we are counting these nine girls so we are counting these two times so we have to subtract it one time we should not do over counting so answer for this simple example is 18 plus 23 minus 9 intersection we have to subtract so it is not 41 it is 32 so answer should be 32 okay now let's go back to our original question so we have been given union of three sets a union b union c is equal to 40 and we are given 
some intersections so uh, uh, chest intersection soccer a intersection b is 9 a intersection c is 7 b intersection c is 12 so when we when we are going to count a and b so this 9 is counted twice a and c so the seven girls are counted twice and similarly b and c these 12 girls are counted twice so we have we should subtract these one time uh, and, and that's fine but how about this area this red area which is a intersection b intersection c how many times we are counting this thing let's see so uh, when we are counting a and b so this area is counted two times when we are counting a it is counted one time when we are counting b so this is counted two times so over here in the right i am maintaining the counter for this area a intersection b intersection c so when uh, so uh, it is counted two times so i have to subtract it one time a intersection b so this area this uh, a intersection b intersection c is also subtracted so we are we have counted this red area one time so when we counted a first time it is counted when we counted b second time it is counted when we subtract a intersection b so this area is subtracted and this is also subtracted so from two now the counter is one now when we included c so this is counted again so counter is increased to two and now we are subtracting the intersection a intersection c so this is subtracted so our counter counter is now one and now we subtract b intersection c so our counter goes to zero so this is a plus b plus c minus pairwise intersections a intersection b a intersection c minus b intersection c so in this counting this red area a intersection b intersection c it has vanished it's not counted at all so our counter is zero but we have to count it otherwise this area will be excluded so we add this area back a intersection b intersection c so that this area is counted one time so uh, this is the right counter so we get our formula for a union b union c as a plus b plus c minus a intersection b minus a intersection c minus b intersection c plus a intersection b intersection c this is quite important formula so we can solve our problem now so uh, we have got this formula and only thing that we have to do is to find the value of c which is the girls who like to do biking so we, it's simple algebraic manipulation take right turns on the right side so uh, we need c so it goes on left side all other terms go to the right side and we can simply solve with the given numbers so uh, this problem is done so problem number six how many positive integers not bigger than 20 are divisible by either 2 or 3 so let's do part a first so number of integers given are 20 let's call those integers which are divisible by 2 by the set a so this a circle represent those numbers which are divisible by 2 so we know which numbers are these 2 4 6 8 10 up to 20 so there are 10 integers which are divisible by 20 by 2 so we can simply find which integers are divisible by 2 by simply 20 divided by 2 and we have to uh, floor it down round down we call it floor so this is 10 so those integers which are divisible by 3 so simply 20 divided by 3 so it's 18 point six six uh, so 18 is divisible by 3 so 20 by 3 will be 6.666 we make it floor so b is 6 the size of set b is 6 we, we know which numbers are these 3 6 9 12 15 18 now there are some numbers which are divisible by both a and b so those numbers are actually the intersection of a and b these are counted both in a and b 
so these are counted two times when we are looking at the union of a union b uh, so in union of a and b so we have to count those integers which are in set a those integers which are in set b but those integers which belong to both a intersection b these are counted twice so we have to subtract it one time so a union b is going to be a plus b minus a intersection b so which uh, what is a intersection b it's quite easy so those numbers which are divisible by both 2 and 3 so it means those numbers which are divisible by 6 simply we can say like this so those numbers are only 6 12 and 18 so we have three numbers which are divisible by both a and b so simply plug in these values in this formula of a union b and we will get the value uh, what, what what are the number of those numbers which are divisible by 2 or 3 so we will get this count so th that's fine let's move to problem number 2 so this is actually quite interesting problem we solve it with famous algorithm of Eratosthenes it's called sieve of Eratosthenes so the question is find all prime numbers less than suppose 100 so till 100 we want to find those integers which are prime uh, I mean it's easy we can count till 100 how many integers are there there are 25 integers which are prime but uh, if it is quite big number so it won't be easy to count so we, we, we can count using uh, C of Eratosthenes or principle of inclusion and exclusion so we need to check factors uh, which uh, which are multiple of some prime numbers so uh, so actually when we, uh, we are going to check some number is prime or not it's enough to go till under root n value of n is 100 so it's enough to go till 10 we just check those prime numbers which are till 10 uh, because our, uh, after that we don't need to check uh, one of the factor is less than 10 the other factor is greater than 10 so if we check a factor less than 10 so the factor greater than check is automatically checked we know 10 multiplied by 10 is 100 so uh, if some factor we are checking below 10 so the fact its corresponding other factor will be greater than 10 so it's enough to check till 10 uh, so we know till 10 which numbers are prime it's 2 3 5 and 7 so first of all we check how many multiples of 2 3 5 7 we have till 100 so it's quite easy so divisible by two numbers are uh, it should be 100 divided by 2 50 divisible by 3 is 100 divided by 3 sorry this is by mistake it's written 20 from the previous part it should be 100 divided by 3 so it will come 33 then divisible by 5 is 100 divided by 5 which is 20 divisible by 7 is 100 divided by 7 which is 40 so we will get those numbers which are divisible by 2 3 5 and 7 but there are some numbers which are divisible by both 2 and 3 and 3 and 5 and 5 and 7 and 2 and 5 and 2 and 7 and 3 and 7 and 5 and 7 so uh, if we represent these by a b c and d those multiple of 2 3 5 and 7 so it means first we have to subtract a intersection b so it means those number which are divisible by both 2 and 3 100 divided by 2 and 3 these many numbers are divisible by both 2 and 3 then a intersection c means numbers divisible by both 2 and 5 so this, this is going to be 10, 100 over 2 into 5. So numbers divisible by both 2 and 7, 100 divided by 14. Numbers divisible by both 3 and 5, numbers divisible by both 3 and 7, and finally numbers divisible by both 5 and 7. It means 100 divided by 5 into 7, 100 divided by 35, which is 2. And then we have to add back, just like in the previous uh, problem, uh, this triple intersection have vanished when we have done all this subtraction thing so we have to add it back one time so 100 divided by those numbers which are multiplied by 2 3 5 
So 100 divided by 2 into 3 into 5. So it's going to be 100 divided by 30. So these are 30, 60, 90, these three numbers. So we have to add 3 and then 2 into, 5, uh, into 3 into 7 is 42. So 100 divided by 42 is going to be 2. And finally, 100 divided by 3 into 5 into 7. So which is going to be 15 times 7. So this is going to be 0 actually. So uh, we don't have any number which is divisible by uh, all 3, 3, 5, 7. It will increase 100. 100 divided by 1, 0, 5 we cannot do. So, so uh, total prime numbers that we are going to get is total numbers which are 100, 100 integers minus above this union A union, B union, C union, D because these numbers are multiple of 2, 3, 5, 7. Uh, but are these the prime numbers? Because we have subtracted 2, 3, 5, 7 as well. We have to add these four numbers back because we know 2, 3, 5, 7 are prime numbers. So 100 minus this the whole union and we have to add 4 into it. But we are forgetting something which is quite important. That is 1. So 1 is not a prime number. And above all this counting, we have considered 1 as a prime number. So from the total prime numbers that we have counted, we have to subtract 1 from the above count. And we will get the right number for the prime numbers. So I hope after all this calculation, you should get 25 as answer as it. these prime numbers are listed here. We can count these are 25 prime numbers. So thank you very much for uh, this whole uh, question number 6. So problem number 7 actually uh, by mistake we have put it in principle of inclusion and exclusion. This problem is actually pigeonhole principle. So the question is uh, we have third, uh, 13 squares of side 1 and we want to place these 13 squares in a circle of radius 2. And we have to show that at least two of the squares have common points. So we have some intersection between squares. It cannot be that all squares that we are going to place inside the circle are non-overlapping. They have to overlap at some point. So suppose this is our circle of radius 2 and we have 13 of these squares. So first of all, what is the radius of circle? It's 2. So area of circle is going to be 2 pi r. Uh, in this problem, actually, we don't have to place these circles in, in it. We just compare the areas of 13 squares and area of the circle. And we will get the argument that uh, they have to be overlapping if we are placing these circles, uh, uh, sorry, if we are placing these squares in the circle. So radius of the circle is 2 and area of circle is 2 pi r. So you can compare 2 pi r. So r value of r is 2. So 4 into pi is going to be something. 12 point something we will get it. And area of one square is 1 into 1. So it's going to be 1 unit. Area of 13 squares are going to be 13 units. And area of circle is less than 13 units. So this means... Uh, we cannot fit all 13 squares in the circle. They will be overlapping. Even uh, they, they will be much, much overlapping actually. So, I mean, this was an easy question. So, let's move to question number 8. Uh, so, question number 8, you have to do by yourself. Uh, you have to propose a question uh, in which you have to apply principle of inclusion and exclusion. So, you have to give solution for this thing. So be careful of overcounting. In principle of inclusion exclusion, you have to propose a problem in which some of objects that we are going to count, some of the scenarios that we are going to count are overlapping. And we have to subtract those overlapping scenarios. So thank you very much.